Well, it's quite a significant tweak because we know that the spike protein, that bit of the virus that generates protective immunity, is very, very different in Omicron. In fact, it's more different than in any other variant that we've seen. So it's certainly a long way from the current vaccines, which are based on the original Wuhan variant of the virus. So it's very, very different, and it will give a much more specific immune response. Well, tell us more about what the trials involve and how long that will take. Yeah, so the trials are difficult in a way because, of course, so many people are already vaccinated. So in a way, what the trial is going to do is two things. It's going to try and identify a few hundred unvaccinated people and and then just immune, immunise them from the very beginning with this new variant form of the vaccine. But it's also going to use it as a booster jab. And it's going to use it in a booster jab that with people who've already had two shots of the original vaccine. This is going to take several months to roll out. And of course, it is complicated by the fact that, as Dr. Fauci has said, so many people, not only in America, but around the globe, are already infected with Omricon. And Omricon's providing an additional boost in itself to people that are already vaccinated. So you've got to tease all that apart, really, in terms of what's going on with the immune response. Um, but, but it will provide some really important information that will help in subsequent development of vaccines. When it is eventually approved then, will it be available as a booster to those who are already vaccinated and as a multiple dose vaccine for those who are still unvaccinated? It, it will be, but of course what's going to happen anyway is that many folk around the globe, particularly the elderly and most vulnerable, are very likely to need an additional shot. That may be a fourth shot, it may be a fifth shot actually, later in the year. And having something that's tailored to Omricon will be very useful, although we can't predict, of course, what new variants may arise in the meantime. Well, other companies are also working on an Omicron-specific vaccine. Clearly, they see a benefit and, and see it as worth developing, even if it arrives a little late in some people's view. Yeah, I think that's the case, because I think if you've been sub previously immunised with the original strain of the virus and then you get uh, an Omicron boost, you're likely to have a much broader immune response that should not only protect you against Omicron, but hopefully protect against severe disease that might be associated with any new variants. And we know there will be new variants. The goal here actually is to eventually develop a universal coronavirus vaccine, a vaccine that will protect against all variants, known and unknown. And there's a lot of work going on around the world now to try and, and, and develop that. But this new Omicron specific vaccine would help us understand more about the body's immune response and how we might develop newer, broader vaccines. Well, we've just learned today also that deaths from COVID in the US are at their highest level in 11 months. What does this tell us about the Omicron variant compared to Delta? Well, we know from lots of data, original data from South Africa, data from our own country here in the UK, that, that, that Omicron is less dangerous than Delta, but that shouldn't be interpreted as, as if being infected with Oricon is safe. So what we're seeing in the UK is echoed elsewhere across the world, that people are getting sick, particularly those who are unvaccinated. So our intensive care beds are not as full in the UK as they were previously, but where people are going into intensive care is predominantly individuals who are not vaccinated. Other people who've had just two doses of the original vaccine are getting sick, some of them are requiring short stays in hospital, but not on intensive care therapy. So I think what's happening in the States is, off, is, is a product of, of people not being fully jabbed. In the UK, of course, we've many of us have had booster jabs and that gives you additional levels of protection. But it's, it's predominantly among those folks who are unvaccinated or are vulnerable because they're immunocompromised who are getting particularly sick with uh, infection with the Omicron variant. And just finally, Lawrence, I know you say it's uh, difficult to tell, but based on the timing of the Omicron variant emerging, is it possible at all to gauge when we might start to see another variant of concern? Yeah, well, these are popping up all the time. So there are a number of variants already, of so-called variants under investigation. And of course, what this tells us is that this isn't going to go away, that the, the pandemic is going to continue as long as the virus is allowed to spread particularly in under-vaccinated populations. And therefore, as we, again, we keep hearing, it's in all our interest to get as many people around the globe vaccinated as possible. But we're gonna to have to live with these variants, hopefully with the wall of immunity that we have, 
both from previous infection and from current vaccines and booster jabs, most of the population will be very well protected. But we can't guarantee that at this stage. Of course. Lawrence Young, thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you.